いらっしゃいませ。みなさん、こんにちは。少し時計、よくそ。Okay, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about five things that I find confusing in Japan. So, if you like videos like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. And let's get into it. Okay, so number one on the list. Escalators. So, not escalators generally, because I mean, I've seen an escalator before, we have them in the UK, but it's the side of the escalator you stand on. So, in Japan, this is different depending on what city you're in. So, in Tokyo, I think it's the left, and Osaka, it's the right, which is so confusing because in the UK, it's always the right. Yeah, it's always the right. I just have to mentally take myself there. Yeah, it's always the right, and people can walk up on the left side. So, yeah, when I first came to, to Japan, I went to Tokyo and Osaka in the same trip, and I was so confused because I got used to the left side, and then suddenly everybody was standing on the right side in Osaka, and I was just like, wait, what? Yeah. So, I don't know. How did this happen? Does anybody know? Is there like a reason for this? I'm not sure. Also, I think escalator speed here in general is a lot slower than it is in the UK. In the UK, our escalators are pretty fast. <laughs> okay, so number two bank books. I had never seen a bank book in my entire life until I moved to Japan. In the UK, you just have your bank card. And then you have online banking, so you can see your activity kind of as and when it's happening. And then they used to send you a paper statement every month in the post. I don't think they do that now because everybody just has access to online banking. I like bank books though. When I first got a bank book, I was so excited because obviously here it's not a new thing. Everybody's had bank books for years, but to me it was new, so I was like, And then, like, you put it in the machine and it prints everything out. I was like, look how cool this is! Like, I've never seen a machine where you could put like that much paper in. I don't know. I don't know. It's amazing. I still get really excited when I put my bank book in the machine. It's just a weird experience. And the ATMs here have the bank book section and then the slot for your card. And then also, You can put money in and take it out in like this hole that you reach into. In the UK, it's not like that. There's a small little slit just under the monitor, and like notes come out that way. So it just like spits it out at you the same way it does with your card. But yeah, I like in Japan, there's a hole that you like reach into it. I get, I'm too excited about it. But for me, this is new. I'm not used to it. Okay, so number three automatic doors on taxis. This. Was it's like getting into a little spaceship. I thought it was the coolest thing, but also really confusing because the first time I came to Japan, I took a taxi from the airport to my hotel, which I didn't plan to. I wanted to take public transport, but there was an issue with my luggage, and we ended up leaving the airport much, much later than we'd planned. And I reached for the taxi door, and the driver was just like, no, 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 no. And I was like, what, what, why, why, why? Like, why, why wouldn't I close the door? And then I saw it close automatically, and I was just like, for the longest time, I thought it was a dream. I was like, is this, am I still, am I asleep on the plane? And I'm just imagining what Japan is like. It was really strange. And then I even thought maybe I was just in a special taxi. I wasn't because then the next time I got a taxi, the same thing happened, and I was just like, oh my goodness, this is great. And actually, it's better, I think, than closing the door yourself. The amount of times I've got into a taxi in the UK and I've gone to close the door, and either I haven't closed it properly or something's wrong with it, and then the driver has to get out and he opens and closes the door a few times, it's just a bit awkward for everyone. But at least, With it being automatic in Japan, that is one less thing you have to worry about. Okay, so the next thing, number four. Irashaimase! So now, obviously, I know it means welcome, essentially, 
But when you go shopping in the UK, no one really says anything to you. Maybe they'll just give you a quick nod like, thanks for coming in, but no one says anything. So when I first went shopping in Japan and people were shouting, I was like, oh my God, what does it mean? Do I reply? Am I supposed to say something? But what do I say? What are they saying? I, I was so scared. I was just like, ah, ah. But it wasn't until like the second or third day when I met up with one of my friends that she had to explain like, no, 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 it's fine. You don't have to say anything. It's just them welcoming you to the store. It's kind of like a tradition. It's like customary. It's just something they do. You don't need to talk to anyone or reply. But it's really, really scary if you've never experienced it before because typically when somebody says something to you, you just feel compelled to reply in some way. So I don't know, sometimes I give a little nod of acknowledgement, like, yeah, thanks for welcoming me. But yeah, when I first came to Japan, I was so scared, and but now I, I like it. And now it's weird because I notice when I go into a store and no one says irashamase, I'm like, it's weirdly quiet. What's happening? But yeah, they probably just didn't see me. I'm really small. Okay, so number five, the date. Specifically, the year. Okay, I've left this one till the end because I still find this confusing and I think I'm gonna have a hard time explaining it as well because I just find it that confusing. So let's start with the thing that I've gotten used to first and that is the date. So in the UK we say day, month and then year. In Japan I believe you say year, month and then day. So it's completely reversed. The fact that the month and the day are switched, that can be confusing depending on what time of the month that we're in. But I'm used to that now, it's fine, that's fine. The year I'm not used to. Because in Japan, it's done by, I guess, era or period. So when there's a new emperor in power, it changes. So currently we're in Reiwa and we're in the third year, year of Reiwa. So it's the kanji for Reiwa and then three. And then it changes every time the emperor changes. But to me, this, I mean, I'm used to it a little bit now, but when I first saw this, I was so confused because it, it the year would just be a singular number, like two or three, or at least for now it is. And I was like, what? How can that be the year? The year's 2021. Why, why are you writing a three that, wait. And then I remembered it's because of the emperor and it's, it's done that way. Uh, but that is something that I still find confusing and it might take a while for me to get used to because it's just so different to anything we have in the UK. It's cool, it's interesting. It's something that I definitely need to get used to, but I love that it is so unique and so Japanese in a way. Definitely a little bit confusing to me, might take me some time. Okay, that is it for this list. Was there anything that you thought might be confusing and should be added to this list? Did anything surprise you at all? Let us know in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one. Bye!